Technology is rapidly advancing and changing our lives in many ways, for better or worse. Basic needs like transportation, shopping, food, and entertainment are much more convenient and personalized based on our data. But what about the needs of an entire city? What if you only needed to swipe right for your next plumber? Or your commute to work was done in a self-driving car? These might actually be possible if a corporation had complete control over a city. So how exactly would our lives change if a mega corporation owned a city? What new technology could improve our cities? What are the pros and cons? What would happen if it failed? This is what if. And here's what would happen if a mega corporation ran your city. According to the UN, over two thirds of the global population will live in urban areas by 2050. This steady increase of people living in cities has attracted multi-billion dollar tech companies like Google and Amazon, who are looking into new ways to make cities smarter with technology. Google's sister company Sidewalk Labs is planning to transform Toronto's eastern waterfront with a $50 million development known as Keyside. Using data and algorithms, Keyside will have innovative systems like pay-as-you-throw garbage chutes that charge households based on waste output, heated sidewalks to melt snow with weather sensors, and smart traffic systems calibrated to ease congestion during rush hour or big events. This big data will make it the most measurable community in the world. As promising as all this sounds, what would happen if a mega corporation was given the keys to an entire city? Believe it or not, corporately owned cities already exist. Take Celebration Florida, for example, a small town next door to Disney World. Disney owns and operates two of its utility companies and developed a town as a hub for its business interests. Other cities like Stonecrest, Georgia, even offered to change their name to Amazon to have the corporation set up shop there. They believe it will stimulate the job market with around 50,000 jobs expected to pay an average of $100,000 each. Topeka, Kansas, which was briefly known as Topekachu during the Pokemon craze of the late 1990s, also spent several months as the town of Google in a bid to attract the company. So if you're willing to rename your town to What Ifsville, well, we'll be in touch. If cities were run like businesses, democracy could be a thing of the past. An elite ring of executives or just one leader could decide the future and outcomes of every citizen in What Ifsville. In a corporate autocracy government where one person holds all the power, the mayor would be CEO. Citizens would be treated like employees, and all their actions could be tracked on a rating system. Having all this personal data could improve the efficiency and behavior of a city, but at the cost of personal privacy and the public's sanity. Sorry to say, but your favorite restaurants and cafes might not be in this city, especially if they've been blocked as a competitor to the mega corporation. Unfortunately, this would take away people's freedom to choose one company over the other. Regular city services like healthcare, transportation, hydro and sewage treatment would be privatized and at the mercy of market demand. In a corporate city, taxes would be treated more like investments. The more tax you pay, the bigger your return on investment. The rich would get a higher priority for basic services, such as fixing potholes or creating park systems. This would quickly divide the rich from the poor and limit people's access to essential goods and services. But what if we cut out the middleman and let artificial intelligence run our cities? Would life be better? Imagine a city with self-driving cars, police drones, and even robot bosses. With the rapid advancement of AI, many jobs will be lost due to automation. An AI work study conducted by Oracle found 57% of respondents said they would trust a robot over their boss. Most of the participants felt a robot boss would be unbiased and likely to do a better job of organizing their work schedules. Let's face it, your human boss is probably more understanding of your emotions though. And frankly, I'd rather be terminated by a human.
let's consider another scenario where a city is run by a social media company. All residents would be required to use their apps to access services in the city. To get things done in this city, you simply take a photo and tag the city services account, and they would get to work. These requests wouldn't be caught up in bureaucratic paperwork and could be processed more quickly. But the city would have complete access to all your data, including your location, likes, dislikes, favorite what-if videos, and even your awkward selfies. Uh-oh, you didn't see that one. Daily lives would be bombarded by personalized ads for restaurants, businesses, and services based on your data. Essentially, you'd lose any data privacy. In our current system, we have the choice to elect city councillors and municipal government who reflect our preferences. But in a mega corporate city, the corporation would act in our best interest and take away our ability to vote, sacrificing you to follow the herd. Another scenario is a city run by a company that outsources labor like many popular rideshare apps. In this mega corporate city, City services would be provided by third-party private contractors. People would be able to rate each city service worker based on a metric similar to Uber or Yelp. With all city services outsourced, such as transportation, garbage removal, snow removal, electricity and water maintenance, this would open up a lot of job opportunities. There could be a surge in development and city construction. Cities could also earn money by selling off depreciating assets such as maintenance equipment that could no longer be used. In this economy, problems like potholes or street construction would get solved more quickly and could guarantee a high quality of work. This might seem all fine and dandy, but if you're a low-income citizen in this scenario, you would have a tough time getting any work done in your neighborhood. Even worse, if this rating system was fully adopted and applied to every citizen, things could get out of hand pretty quickly. There may be more Good Samaritans out there as a result, but one little mistake could drop your rating significantly, potentially banishing you from society. If a city is run by a corporation, it can only stay afloat if it's profitable. Just as a traditional city answers to its citizens, a corporate city must answer to its shareholders. If the shareholders aren't happy with the city's profitability, they could simply pack up their bags and find another lucrative location, leaving What Ifsville as a ghost city. Despite many pros to having a smart city, a technocratic or autocratic government could cause civil unrest. The best scenario would be a hybrid city, where we could embrace technology to answer the needs of the city and still maintain our freedoms and rights. Whether you live in a small, rural town or a large city, we all value our freedom to choose. This system of democracy allows us to make real, actionable changes in our lives and communities. A corporation may revitalize a city with jobs and technology, but they could destroy its unique charm and identity. Maybe we can start by improving the technology of our city's roads by paving them with solar panels. Well, that's a story for another what if?